All right, everybody, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little while, but I am back. I hope everybody had a good 4th of July weekend. And by the way, thank you to everyone who voted on this topic. So what I got out of the poll that I posted is that you guys really don't like it when I talk about sports venues. So I will do my best to stay away from that topic. Anyways, I have had several requests for this one lately. So today's video is going to be about Don Pablo's. So if you've never heard of this place before, they're pretty much a chain of Mexican style restaurants that operated all throughout the United States. Don Pablo's would experience massive growth throughout the 90s, and at their peak, they would operate over 120 locations in 20 different states. However, they would hit a brick wall, and their growth would massively slow by the early 2000s. So after years of declining sales, the restaurant chain became a liability, and the company would be sold several different times, and ultimately, they would close after nearly 30 years of operation. It looks like most of the old locations have been repurposed, but there still are several remaining abandoned, as I've looked at several of them on Google Maps. And as always, if you do know of an abandoned location, let me know about that in the comments because I always enjoy checking them out. The concept for Don Pablo's was visioned by DFNR Restaurants Incorporated all the way back in the early 80s. This company was no stranger to the food industry, as they already operated a rather small but very successful chain of steakhouses called Harrigan. DFNR wanted to diversify, and they thought Don Pablo's would be a good fit, as Mexican restaurants in the United States were very popular at this time. They knew they would have a lot of competition, as at that time, the market was dominated by a chain called Chi-Chi's. So anyways, the first Don Pablo's would open in Texas in 1985. By all accounts, this first restaurant was very much successful, and it would prompt the company to open even more locations. Don Pablo's would have to do things different to stay ahead of their competition, and from the very beginning, they would only use fresh, high-quality ingredients. Along with that, they put a very strong emphasis on their interior and decor. It was said they would often hire interior designers and change things up frequently. In the early years, their menu consisted of the usual items, such as burritos, fajitas, quesadillas, soups, and salad. Later on, they would diversify a little bit by adding things such as appetizers. Anyways, their growth was steady, and by 1992, they had 10 locations, most of which were located in the southern states. And at that point, the company's sales were around $15 million annually. By 1994, they were up to 19 locations, and most of their success was most likely contributed to the quality of their food. Along with that, they were fairly reasonably priced, with a typical dinner costing just under $8 a person. 1995 would be a pretty big year for them. That year, they grew to 51 locations. So by all accounts, DF&R did a good job with both growing and operating Don Pablo's as they saw a lot of growth in just 10 years. But the company was at a bit of a crossroads. At this point, each Don Pablo's location was making around $2.5 million annually. I mean, that's not too bad. That's pretty good, actually. But you see, the company's other restaurant chain, Harrigan's, was making over $3.5 million per location. So the difficult decision was made to sell off Don Pablo's and focus purely on their steakhouse. I know it was a risky decision at that time, but looking back, it was probably the best thing DF&R could have done. They would find a buyer for the company just a year later, and the new owner would be a company called Apple South. And as their name might suggest, they were a major Applebee's franchisee. In fact, at that point, they operated over 170 Applebee's locations. Apple South would just continue to grow Don Pablo's. The company would actually more than double the amount of locations in just a few short years. So with the success of Don Pablo's, the company would make a very bold decision. First off, in 1998, Apple South would change their name to Avado. On top of that, they would actually sell off all of their Applebee's locations to focus strictly on growing Don Pablo's. 
By 1999, they were up to 128 locations. They operated in 20 different states. At this time, they were the second largest full-service Mexican restaurant in the United States. They were second only to Chi-Chi's. Oh, and as a side note here, let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video about Chi-Chi's. I think that might be an interesting one. Anyways, Avado was very big on increasing same-store sales to stay profitable. They would try to upsell by doing things such as having servers push appetizers. However, there is a possibility they may have done things such as cutting corners with the food. So I don't usually do this, but I did read several Don Pablo reviews around this time, and well, they were pretty mixed. Some reviews were pretty good, with one newspaper giving the food a score of 4.5 forks out of 5, and another one calling the food quality, quote, ho-hum. Anyways, something definitely happened around this time, as food sales started to decline. Between the year 2000 and 2004, they would end up closing 22 locations. In fact, Avado would have to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. They would just continue to struggle from here, and they would have to close additional locations. And by 2008, Don Pablo's would be sold. The buyer would be right a restaurant group, and at this point, there were just 41 restaurants remaining open. Rita tried to revive the dying brand by doing things such as remodeling, changing up the menu, and selling franchise rights. They would also have to upgrade and repair some locations, as some of the restaurants were getting to be in pretty bad shape. Welcome back. A popular Mexican restaurant along the river is shut down this evening. This afternoon, a housing inspector posted a condemned notice on the riverfront building. Tanya, that legal notice was posted just a few hours ago stating that Don Pablo's is condemned and that anyone who sets foot in the property could have to pay up to a $500 fine. The a city engineer came out today to inspect the deck and that's when the legal notice was posted requesting that no one occupy the building until it is repaired. All in all, they weren't very successful. As by 2014, there were just 34 Don Pablo locations. And with that, they would once again be sold. This time, the buyer would be Food Management Partners, or FMP for short. FMP was a major Buffalo Wild Wings franchisee, so there were high hopes that they could turn things around. But that didn't happen. They didn't really do much with Don Pablo's. Well, except for close more locations. In fact, FMP themselves would have to file for Chapter 11 Bankruptcy Protection in 2016. The few remaining locations would close in the coming years. Often, they would just close for the night and they just never reopen the next day. There was no advance warning. So fast forward to 2018, there's just one Don Pablo's location, and that was located in Deptford, New Jersey. However, it would close in June of 2019. Anyway guys, that's all I have for you today. That's the story of Don Pablo's. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a shorter video, but hey, the decline happened really quick. So I do want to mention something that I want to do for my next video. If you go to my channel and click on the community tab, I am going to have a pool there of all the suggestions I've gotten on my channel. So you can pretty much vote on what the next video will be about. And if you don't like any of the options, then you can leave a comment and I will consider that one as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit like if you like this kind of thing, and I will see you all next time.